Welcome to the Building Up Women in Property podcast. I'm your host, Rebecca Bangura, and I'm thrilled to have you here with me today. This podcast is for ambitious women who work in property and construction, who want to learn how to have a career they love on their terms. Join me every week where I'll leave you excited and confident to take your next steps. Thanks for being here with me. Now let's get started. Hello and welcome back for another episode of Building Up Women in Property. And I'm very excited. Today is our 50th episode. I can't believe it has been a year of putting these podcasts out into the world. I hope you are enjoying them and finding them beneficial. I love putting this out into the world and sharing my ideas, um, sharing the ideas of others as well to a broader audience so that we can move forward as a community of women within the property and construction industry in order to make this a better place for us all to work, a better industry to be part of, and to really grow and have more of a presence and more of an impact in what is an incredible industry to be part of. So I feel really privileged to get to share my ideas with you. Thank you for being here. Whether you're new or you've been here since the start, I really do appreciate you and I hope that these insights support you on your journey. And if you are getting benefit from these podcasts, please jump onto iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts and please leave a review so that it will help others find this as well. Okay, into today's episode. Today we are talking about cultivating emotional intelligence. And I'm going to be honest, this can be an awkward topic to talk about because people with high emotional intelligence or high EQs, they get it. They get this topic. But people with low EQs, really can struggle with the concepts that are presented here and they can really struggle with how relevant they are or why this is really an area that needs to be developed. But I really am a firm believer that people with a strong emotional intelligence or EQ are the people that will lead the future. I really believe EQ is what separates the okay or the good from the great and I think it is something that we all need to be really aware of and really actively cultivate in ourselves regarding of where we start as a baseline. And I think for a long time, EQ was seen as sort of being that touchy-feely soft skills. I think it has never been more important than right now, particularly as we see the emergence and the increasing prevalence of AI, which will ultimately reduce the need for lots of professions and lots of people within different roles. And what we are seeing is it's actually the connection part, the people that are able to connect with others and motivate and really have that deeper empathy and understanding. It's people with those skills that will remain relevant, irrespective of what happens with AI. So we're going to get into what EQ is, understanding our own emotional intelligence, how having this awareness And this skill set really benefits us as individuals and also as organisations. And we're going to talk about how to develop these skills for ourselves, whether we lead people or not. These really are crucial skills, not only in our work, but in our lives. And they add depth to our relationships and really create more opportunities in all aspects of our lives. So I'm excited to get into this. And again, if you are someone that does have a strong EQ already, I invite you to listen to this as a refresher because we can always get better at this and sometimes we can just have those refreshing insights that give us a new perspective and help us move the dial forward even more. So understanding EQ, what is it? So it stands for emotional quotient, but it's more commonly referenced as emotional intelligence and it's how effectively we express emotions both in ourselves and how able we are to recognise it in other people. And it encompasses a variety of skills and competencies around emotions, self-awareness, self-regulation, empathy, social skills, communication skills, and motivation. So there's a lot in there, but it really is a topic worth unpacking because, you know, there's a saying that says, you know, people don't leave organisations, they leave managers. And I think anyone that's had a less than great manager can probably really resonate with that. I know I certainly can. And I think you know, we can talk about values and cultures of an organisation and having that aligned to our own values as an employee. And in fact, I think I spoke about this last week. Um, I'll link in the show notes to that episode. But if our direct manager does not embody those same values and those same culture, and if they are not able to connect with us on a really human individual level, then it can make the employee experience on an individual level really, really tough. And this is when we see people leave jobs. And the truth is, 
We are desperate for good talent in our industry and we need to be retaining and cultivating the talent we have. And so it's really important if you are a people leader that you invest in developing emotional intelligence so that you can genuinely connect with your team. And if you're not a people leader, I want you to think about how your work impacts those around you. So if you're working as part of a project or as part of a team, think about how you're able to connect with your peers and the impact that you have on them as they do on you and just really acknowledge that your contribution is significant. Even if you don't always understand how significant it is or you may not see a direct cause and effect, your presence, how you interact with people, how you make them feel, whether they feel seen and heard and understood by you will make all the difference to how they work with you, how enjoyable the experience is and how good the overall outcomes are. So again, I think this is something we all really need to be conscious of. As I said at the start, EQ has often been seen as this soft skill set. Unlike IQ, which refers to intellect, it talks more about how intelligent you are and what your academic capabilities are. And IQ tends to be perceived as more of a fixed thing than EQ. So EQ is much more malleable, it's much more learnable, and it's something you can really cultivate much more easily if you put in the time and effort to do so. And again, EQ is not about how smart you are. It's about how good you are at communicating and interpreting messages in order to get the best outcomes. I'm sure many of you can relate to this, but in my last role, I had a manager who was technically excellent. He was great at doing the technical part of his job and he really shone in that space. But when it came to managing a team, when it came to leading, to developing, to supporting the team, he really lacked in this area. He did not have strong emotional intelligence. And the result of that was conversations would be had, but he would never understand the impact on the individual employee. And for me in that situation, it was at the start deeply frustrating. And towards the end, it was actually really stressful. It caused me a great deal of anxiety because I never felt that I was being understood or acknowledged. And I by no means think that was an intentional thing, but I think there was absolutely a gap in terms of emotional intelligence there that really in the end hampered our relationship and hampered how I felt about showing up to work. And that was a really hard experience for me because I really enjoy work. I'm highly motivated by it. And so when there was that disconnect and I didn't feel seen and didn't feel valued, it had a detrimental impact on my relationship with work, as well as having a detrimental impact on my own confidence and my well-being more broadly. And I know that this is not an isolated situation. I know that so many people experience this, and I know that it's a massive challenge for organisations. How do we develop the capabilities with frontline managers to be able to support their teams, to be able to drive the best outcomes from their people so that they're not only performing at their best, but they also are retained and developed within the business, which obviously has a huge productivity, efficiency, and financial benefit for every organization. So, you know, I think these are the challenges that many organizations face. And it's so important that we can have these conversations to start to tackle these challenges and find a way forward. Because as I said, these are skill sets that can be developed. And it's about, first of all, understanding why it's important and then giving people the right resources, the right tools, the right support to build this. I hope you've been enjoying the episode. I wanted to take a moment to let you know about my free Career Confidence Masterclass. This is for ambitious career oriented women who are ready to stop playing small and to confidently create a career you love. Head over to my website, beautifuldisruptions.com for more info. Now let's get back to the episode. going back to each of us as an individual, we do have the opportunity to build our own emotional intelligence. And as I said, it's something I think we should really be working on. And it all starts with self-awareness. How do we show up in a conversation? How do we handle ourselves? What are the things we are saying? What are the things we might be expressing through our body language, whether consciously or subconsciously? What is the connection between what we say and what we do? Like, do our actions actually align? These are the things that shape people's opinions of us and that build trust or also really erode trust. And once we really become aware of ourselves, 
how we are feeling in certain situations, how we are showing up, how that is impacting our communication, how it's impacting our work and what we do, then we have the ability to make changes. And so I always suggest that people start there, right? Get really clear on where you're at. A great way to do this is journaling or giving yourself some time and space before or after meetings to really reflect on what's happened and what the outcomes were and what worked and what didn't and really start to hone your own radar around how you show up in certain situations. And it's important to acknowledge that we all have certain stories and certain beliefs that guide our thinking and our self-belief. They also have a huge impact on how we show up in certain situations. So getting the awareness of a lot of those subconscious stories, those sort of limiting beliefs that we may have is also really crucial because once we're aware of them, we can start to break them down and we can start to reframe them in a way that allows us to show up being more aware of our own emotional responses and actions, but also being more receptive and understanding of those around us as well. And I do think sort of that umbrella term of mindfulness really does come to play with emotional intelligence because when we have that time and space to reflect, it really does create a space for us to improve our EQ and to go deeper with this work. And so once we sort of establish that self-awareness, we also want to then be able to regulate our own emotional responses. So you might be someone who flies off the handle and gets really angry in certain situations, or you might be someone who gets quite emotional and tears up in situations. Whatever these responses are, once we're aware that these happen, we can start to understand what the triggers are for them. And we can start to then put in place measures to control those emotions if they are not perhaps the most appropriate thing. And by appropriate, I mean not only for you, but for the people you're communicating with. So if you're in a meeting and you lose your temper and start yelling at people, that not only impacts you, it impacts everyone else in that room. It changes the tone of the environment. And the result of that is that often people won't want to speak up. They might not want to be in the same environment as you or work on the same projects. So it might impact them on not only an individual level, but also on a broader business level. So this is where self-regulation becomes really crucial. How do your behaviours and your emotions start to impact those around you? And what can you do to curtail those when the impact is negative or potentially detrimental to other people and to certain situations? This again is about building a toolkit of skills. And I think we all need to really be thinking of ourselves as assets within an organisation with a toolkit of skills that we can bring to situations. And this is why investing in ourselves by doing this personal and professional development work is so important, even if you don't need it right in this moment. So you really want to get to a place where you understand how you show up and be able to curtail your emotions so that they are appropriate for the situation. And then the next part is being able to read other people. So quite often people won't necessarily say what is on their mind. It's being able to read between the lines and understand what might be driving their behaviours or be driving their thought patterns. So this really does require empathy. It requires you getting out of your own head and letting go of your own assumptions and experiences to look at it from someone else's point of view and being able to hold space for someone to feel safe enough to speak openly, to be themselves and to really share their ideas in an uncensored way. And this means that we need to be open to other people's perspectives and we need to not just take things on face value because people will so often not actually tell you what's going on, right? I'm sure we've all had this experience of someone asking, how are you? And you automatically respond with, yeah, I'm fine, but actually you're not right? We've all been in that situation, but more often than not, we will default to the socially acceptable, the easiest answer that will avoid conflict or confrontation or discomfort, either for others or for ourselves. It doesn't mean that we are okay in that moment. And it doesn't mean that we should shy away from having these conversations because actually once we can scratch the surface and get deeper down into what is actually going on and understanding things from someone else's perspective, then that is when we can really create real change. That is when we can create really meaningful outcomes. We can have really open, honest conversations, but it does require work on your part to get there. This really is the skill of emotional intelligence. And quite often it's about how do we connect on a individual level. And often this is about sharing stories and anecdotes with people and making people feel accepted and at ease. And often it's about taking the focus away from ourselves and onto the other person and really being there as an active and engaged listener who genuinely cares and values the people they work with, not only as employees or as colleagues, but as people. And I think 
we so often forget the power of being human-centric when we actually put people first and we appreciate them for who they are rather than simply what they can do. And I think if we can flip that to really think about people as individuals, as unique beings with a range of skills and capabilities, when we can start from that place, we open up the doors to expand and grow and develop new skill sets and new experience that drives better outcomes for our business and for ourselves as individuals. So I know I keep banging on about it, but I think this work is so important. And, you know, we are all going to get it wrong along the way. We all have those conversations where we walk away and think, I should have said that differently, or I don't think I got my message across well, or I don't think I showed up in the best light. I don't think I showed up as the best version of myself in that situation. And I think that's okay, right? We're all on this journey. None of us are perfect. None of us are are robots, right? We don't want to be, but it's then about how can we correct that situation if we can, or how do we show up differently next time? And how do we build that resilience within ourselves to keep going and to keep engaging in often difficult conversations to really get to the heart of matters and cultivate really meaningful relationships and support ourselves and others around us to really grow and be who they genuinely are. I think this is such a beautiful place to operate from. I think when we work with these people who genuinely do want to connect with us, that's when we enjoy our work the most. It's when we bring out the best in who we are. And so let's keep practicing this together. Let's keep working on it. Let's keep getting better. And let's keep holding a higher standard for ourselves and for each other around how we communicate. And again, this isn't about sugarcoating things. This is not always about having positive outcomes for everyone, but it is about having honest conversations and about supporting each other in a way that really cares for individuals and allows everyone to really be who they are and be that best version of themselves. Okay, my beautifuls, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you again for being here with me this week and for your support over the last 50 episodes. I look forward to bringing you the next 50. Now have a beautiful day. Until next time. Thank you for joining me on the Building Up Women in Property podcast. I'm Rebecca Bangura, and if you'd like to learn more about what I do, head over to LinkedIn and connect with me. Have a beautiful day and I'll see you next time.